Hey YouTube, this is MindTech. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be doing a showcase and review of the realistic Nova 40s, which I picked up from Goodwill well over a year ago, and I actually did a review of the day that I bought them, but unfortunately that original video was plagued with horrible, quick, stupid editing, well, um, and ever since I released that video and received comments like motion sickness warning, I've been inspired to recreate that video and give these awesome little headphones a review view and showcase that they deserve. Just to give you some background information on these, they were released in the 1970s, we're not sure when, from Radio Shack, and they were geared towards a mid-range production environment. And you can tell that they were not geared towards the mainstream consumers because of this jack right here. This is an irregular jack, which can only fit in production equipment and maybe some weird hi-fi setups, just like the jack that I have on my modern headphones. But the difference is that you can take it off and it changes into a 3.5 millimeter which fits into any regular stereo setup. But these on the other hand it is not removable so it really limits what devices you can plug it into. I'm also not sure about the MSRP on these. There's really little information on the web about them but today you can pick them up for around 15 to 45 dollars on various secondhand sites. I'm not sure if they're worth it. First of all it's a miracle that they actually work. The sound quality is not that great. They lack pretty much the low range, the mids, and the highs. I'd like to give you a sample from my board with some voice even for the 70s like i've like i mentioned these were mid-range and with some music I'd also like to compare them to my $80 Audio-Technica ATH M40Xs. I have to bump up all three of those channels on my mixer board, or at least somewhat satisfied. Yeah, and as you can see, they're tinny. They really, really lack in the bass. They do not provide a good sound, even for the 70s. I've had a lot of people that bought them in the 70s that said that they just didn't sound that great, that they were just ample enough for what they were doing. If I want to make anything sound good, I always have to bump up all three of those channels on my mixer board. This is what my voice sounds like normally without any EQ. And if I bump up the lows, the mid, and the highs, that sounds a lot better. I heard that people bought these and were at least somewhat satisfied with how they performed for radio shows, maybe some music production. Besides the sound, they're also really uncomfortable. These are super heavy and they're bulky. This covers my entire face and I don't necessarily have a small head. They don't really compress well to your ears. I don't understand why realistic thought that ears are circular or even from the 70s. Like come on. That just doesn't make any sense. This is a lot more logical shape. Your ears actually fit in here. At least they are adjustable. You can move these around and they're also produced from really high quality materials. This is real metal. This is very good synthetic leather if not real leather on the headband and where your ears rest. There is also really high quality fabric in here. Once you get past this fabric, it is pure speaker, so that does also contribute to the uncomfortableness. Specifically to mine, unfortunately, they have seen better days. The leather up on the head strap is completely cracked and the foam has disintegrated. The ear foam has cracked also. The plastic has been scratched and scraped, although it's still in good condition, surprisingly. The logos have been removed somehow. It was really hard for me to actually identify what headphones these were when I first bought them because there wasn't any identification on the headphones. On oh, one more issue, the wires themselves are damaged. So if you move this around a lot, your audio will cut off or it'll only move to one channel. I call that the $10 Big Lots headphone experience. And finally, this cable has completely frailed out and separated. A coil is supposed to look something like this. Clearly, the owner did not treat it well. Probably got some really, really heavy use in a studio environment somewhere, and I hope the previous owner loved these as much as I do, because these are awesome. Like a lot of people have said, they might add them to their hi-fi setups, not because of their hi-fi sound or the aesthetics. They just look retro, 
They look cool because they are retro. They exuberate the 70s. They say this is going to get work done. So they've had a very prominent place in the back of my setup for about two years now. Right next to that vinyl disc, the Sony Walkman that I purchased at the Goodwill, and my previous microphone, the Blue Snowball, which does work still really well, but it also looks kind of retro. These have contributed to a really nice aesthetic in my videos, and I'm really happy that I decided to pick these up. I hope you enjoyed this showcase. Hopefully it was a bit better than the last video, and I'll catch you all in the next one.